कुमार सामी नायक है बोम वाली बुलेटो का रेडियो फिजी टू में पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे रेडियो फिजी टू देश की in the news tonight, new leaders of Methodist Church to work with government. Prime Minister emphasizes on unity. And WEF rectifies water issues in Rewa. From the studios of FBC Suva, Atera Lendua. Good evening, Fiji. The largest religious denomination, the Methodist Church of Fiji, is ready to work with the government to help move the country forward. Speaking to FBC News, newly appointed President Reverend Ili Wunisuwai says they're aware of the COVID-19 impact and other social issues affecting the country. Wunisuwai says the church will work hand in hand with the government. Sanyani Boila reports. <laughs> The Methodist Church's new hierarchy has mapped out the plans for a way forward. We are always uh, ready to work with the government in all ways that we can promote the advance uh, of our society and the welfare of our society. So there is no, no hindrance and uh, we hope to do the same in the future. Church New General Secretary Reverend Ilyasa Naivalu says they're also working on enhancing relationships with other ethnicities who are part of the church. To improve uh, our relationships, uh, like the Indian Division. Um, Indian Division, we have a uh, new minister for outreach now. Just started about three weeks ago and uh, he's a Tauke Fijian and he has to do, and he speaks uh, fluent Hindu, and uh, he's, he's the man there. So we, we're moving on to that. The new heads of the Methodist Church were elected last week by the Church Standing Committee as the members continue to adhere to the COVID-19 restrictions and protocols. Sainiani Mboila, FBC News. Prime Minister Borenge Mbainimarama says Fiji has over the years suffered the folly of division along ethnic, religious and provincial lines. However, he says throughout history we've seen clearly and quite painfully at times the absolute imperative of unity among all Fijians. Speaking at the launch of the commemorative stamps for the Fiji Shivashram Sang in Suva yesterday evening, the Prime Minister highlighted that experience has shown the measurable value of the common and equal citizenship all Fijians share today. He says it has taught Fijians that we must move forward as one nation, one people, leaving no one behind. While marking the 125th birthday of founder Swami Pranavananda Maharaj and 20 years of service by the Fiji Shivashram Sang, the Prime Minister acknowledged the work of the Shivashram. You have supported Fijians not based on who they are, but rather on the difficulty of the circumstances they face. Because regardless of our faith and regardless of the way we worship, Fijians know what is right, we know what is wrong, and we know we must do what we can to aid those who need our help. The Fiji Muslim League is calling on former politician Ben Padarath to refute any comments on his post on social media against the Muslim community. League President Hafiz Khan says if Padarath's initial post of the head boy of the Lotoka Muslim College being allowed to grow a beard is not racially or religiously slanted, Padarath should be discrediting any comments on his post that are against the Muslim community. This after Padarath denied that his initial Facebook post about the head boy had, had any racial or religious bigotry. Lena Reese has more. The Muslim League is taking legal action against Ben Padarath to ensure students are not vilified as such on social media. Yes, we run schools for the benefit of children and nobody, Ben Padarath or whoever, has the right to uh, play with their emotions and particularly to disrupt their lifestyle. And, 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 and to demean them, because that's what he has been doing. Khan is adamant that Padarath is not making any effort to discredit those who have started to speak against the Muslim community because of his post. He says, this is uh, Ms. Strongly, I have no religious or racial cheese Christian. Okay, then when all these racially slanted comments come to your post, why don't you say to them, don't do that, this is not what I meant. Why can't he do that? 
Padarath maintains that his post to seek clarification was taken out of context. No, I asked for clarification from the minister. That was the gist of my post. It had nothing to do with with religion or, or racism as the minister's out, outburst against me. I will defend myself and I will stand by um, the contents of my original post. Attempts to get further comments from the education minister has been futile. However, earlier Minister Rosie Akbar had said Padaris' outburst is bigoted, insensitive and an affront to the right of freedom of religion. She adds the ministry's policy allows schools to cater for students' religious and cultural practices. Lena Rees, FBC News. The Water Authority of Fiji needs more time to address water woes in the Delta or Rewa Delta. While visiting affected areas in Rewa, Infrastructure Minister Tony Sumate informed the villagers that the issues had been identified and the WEF team is working around the clock to address it. Sanyeni Mboila reports. Leakages have been identified in water pipes from Dimbulu settlement to Lokia, resulting in intermittent supply in the Rewa Delta. Obviously, there was a lot of work that needed to be done by the water farm. First of all, they had to move from the swamps, trace all the leakages from the Dimbulu down here to Lokia, and then again on the other side, all the way down to the village, down to the Lokia, and more than like more around. Usamati says water pressure varies in different areas, resulting in the issue. On this side there's about 30 meters, but on the other side is 5 so there's, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. You know, or the fact that you have to bring in the biggest big areas around the pumps you know, to some uh, deflation of the water, but it will take some considerable time. Nukui villager Sekobe Lutunatambua says they face challenges on a daily basis because of no water. We have been facing water issues for the past three days now and we have requested the school to use their taps to help us with our daily living until WEF works something out. Water crisis from December last year and we are fortunate that we have a water tank in the school and uh, all the water tank dried up because we've been using the school community with the village. The minister has assured the villagers that water authority will be cutting water to affected areas in the Rewa Delta for the next few weeks until they rectify the problem. Sainian Mboila, FBC News. Up ahead, work on cyclone damage schools to begin. And single mom aims to expand jewelry business. Radio Fiji 2, Desh ki dhadka. Four schools that sustain the most damage from tropical a part of me, Category 5 severe tropical cyclone Yasa will soon be getting new temporary classrooms. Eleanor Turangivi reports the announcement was made by Minister for Education Rosie Akbar in Lambasa yesterday as the ministry looks to resume its rehabilitation program for schools damaged by the cyclone. Six weeks into the new school year, the Ministry of Education will start rebuilding classrooms in the four schools badly affected by tropical cyclone Easa. We will start the groundbreaking ceremony next week, Friday, to start rebuilding Lekutu's one by seven classroom that was damaged. We're also going to start in the next uh, week or so, um, Yendua Primary, another one by three classroom that will be, they'll be built. Apart from that, Bua District will also start in, in next week after Lekutu with the rehab, and with that we've included Dharma, pri Dharma Primary as well. Classrooms in the four schools were completely destroyed, and students have been learning in 10 since school started in January. New buildings will be done for all these schools as we go along, as and when we receive advice from our engineers and consultants that the structure that is still standing is not so. Students of these schools can expect to be back learning in their classrooms by the start of the second school term. So hopefully in the next six weeks, that's the, that's the target we've given to our contractors, that within the next six, six to ten weeks, all buildings must be completed. The Ministry of Education along with the Republic of Fiji military forces are working together in the rehabilitation of schools in the Northern Division.
Eleanor Turanga View, FBC News. The Agriculture Ministry held its first ever Floriculture Open Day at four venues yesterday. Minister Dr. Mahenra Reddy says this huge step is taken by the ministry to help florists show their products. The ministry paid for the stalls to ease the burden on the participating female florists. Reddy says the Floriculture Open Day will be a monthly event which will be held on the last Saturday of every month. We want to uh, motivate them, we want to encourage them uh, that uh, we will also try to provide a space where they can uh, potentially a market for, for their particular you know, uh, produce and uh, products. So we're very happy that uh, uh, we see reasonably good participation from the seller's side. This week, Israel saw an unusual winter storm that covered the entire Golan Heights with a blanket of snow. It was a rare occasion for Fijian soldiers serving in Golan Heights. Colonel Pinioni Naliba says this natural phenomenon has brought people from across Israel and Syria to the Golan Heights to see, touch and take photographs of the snow. The liver says, though this is not as big as the monster storms some are experiencing in other parts of the world, this much snow is very rare to see in Israel. According to Colonel Naliva, their base was covered in snow and they even built their first snowman. Overseas, Auckland, New Zealand is in its second lockdown in a month as health authorities try to rein in a coronavirus cluster of the more contagious UK variant. The seven-day lockdown announced late uh, yesterday by Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern comes after a local emergence of the UK variant of the new coronavirus that causes COVID-19. Everyone has to start somewhere and it's important to never give up. This rings true for for single mom Loretta Walters, who has started a small venture and aims to make a name for herself in the not too distant future. Walters has been supporting her family ever since she finished high school. Now her small jewelry making business is thriving. Lena Reese with tonight's successful Fijian. Loretta Walters says she and her two siblings had to take up responsibilities early after the passing of their father. Quite a young age. It was at quite a young age when we lost our father and we used to see my mum. She never stopped and she was working and had two jobs. She worked at a garment factory and she worked with one of her cousins. She was a personal tailor. The 37-year-old says after finishing high school, she tried all sorts of hobbies just to generate income. My interests were in hairdressing, cooking as well, baking. I had quite the variety. So then I went and did further studies at the technical college with baking, cookery, and I got the certificates to be a professional chef. But instead, I started to do my baking at home. Loretta gave birth to a son when she was 24. She says it was a challenging time as she had to raise her child and also care for her mother who fell ill. I had to quit my job and I started to look after her. So bath her, fed her, do everything, and then take care of my son as well. So those were the difficulties, but still I used to sit down with my mom and ask her how she went through it after daddy passed away. She always said, if our heart is clean and our minds are set on our goals, we can do it. Seven years on from having lost her mom, Walters is more determined to grow her business, support her family and inspire other single mothers. Lena Reese, FBC News. Up ahead in sports, young girl pursues boxing dream. And semi-finals next for Cricket Fiji. This and more after the break. Bula FM number two and seri.
A 12-year-old girl from Singatoka missed her school badging ceremony to pursue her boxing dream. Merwalesi Wulobo Kolitapa featured in her first bout last night at the TJ's Golden Glove Boxing Championship. Her family was quite emotional after seeing their little girl starting her sporting career. Aquila Dama has the details. Any ordinary 12-year-old girl would be interested in something else, but not this little fighter. My younger siblings are also learning the sport, and we are interested in boxing for our own safety. I'm thankful to my parents for coaching me, and it has become a reality tonight with my first fight. Seeing her daughter in action was a bit too much for Mom Vilisi, who is also her coach. She's supposed to uh, be badged on Friday. So before the tournament, kept on asking her that uh, because of that honor in school, in Singapore District School in Nanana, she said, Mom, please just allow me to go into the ring just for once. Her elder brother, who was in her corner, shared his experience. I was happy when I saw her in the ring tonight. I cried when seeing how confident she was, and she was steady and never stepped back. Even though she won a silver medal last night, this youngster has a bigger dream. My aim is one day win a world title. Her aim in life is to become a world champion. So we as parents already been in that pathway. We're just trying to nurture our daughter. Whatever she can achieve in life, we're just right there 100% behind them. Both her mom and dad are former boxers. Remember the name, Merwalesi Kolitapa, because who knows, you may see her on the world stage in a few years. Aquila Dama, FBC Sports. Last night's program at the Stanley Brown Gym in Walube Suva was the last event for Boxing Fiji's 2020 calendar. National Rep Chone Ndavule won the Best and Fairest Boxer of the Year Award. Wilisi Kolitapa took out the Best Coach Award for her efforts at the Butterfly Boxing Club in Singatoka. Boxing Fiji is now working towards the 2021 season which starts next month. Uh, it went very well. Uh, it was, uh, this is the biggest turnout ever for boxing in our history, the amount of boxers that qualified. And as you saw that, uh, not only that, but uh, there was many awards that was given out tonight. News of the new COVID lockdown in New Zealand came as 8,000 boxing fans crammed into Spark Arena in Auckland to watch the Joseph Parker and Junior Farr fight. Parker emerged victorious over Farr, but behind the scenes was where the real drama was unfolding. It'd be hard to find anyone who predicted little-known Junior Farr would push Joseph Parker for a full 12 rounds. A unanimous points win for the former world champ, which in his words was a little underwhelming. I don't know, it just wasn't um, the performance we wanted tonight. But I mean, a win's a win. We knew that he'd be game. I didn't, real, didn't think he'd be that game. I always know I got his number, but he played a bit of me tonight. We definitely did enough to win the fight, so, and a credit to Junior Farr, he was tough. Parker's camp hoped this will lead to bigger fights in the UK or even bringing an opponent here to cash in on live crowds, if we have crowds at all. Auckland will be going back to lockdown level 3 at 6am tomorrow morning. With two fights to go, organisers tuned in nervously as the Prime Minister broke the news. With 8,000 crammed into Spark Arena, Duco boss David Higgins rushed between dressing rooms after police and other agencies urged him to push the main event forward. But Farz Camp refused. They wanted to move the, the fight time, and, but we had to warm Junior up properly. I mean, his, his hands were wrapped by um, the quarter past 10. As fans were moved on, the reality sunk in for 450 hospitality staff. This may be the last time they work for some time. We were seeing people tonight we hadn't seen for months and you know it was uh, like old family coming back together and, and now we're not going to see them again for who knows. Yeah, we run a food bank and every time these things happen it just, it just escalates. The bright lights have been turned off for professional sport, in Auckland at least. Who knows when they'll be turned back on. 
The Blues started their Super Rugby Aotearoa campaign in convincing fashion last night. In a second half blitz, the Blues calmed the Hurricanes with a 31-16 win. A former Flying Fijians coach Wayne Pivak and his Wales team defeated England 40-24 this morning in their Six Nations clash to win the Triple Crown. He Latrell Mitchell and Cody Walker ran riot for South Sydney Rebators in their NRL warm-up match against Mikaele Rabalawa's Dragons yesterday. The Rebators won 44-16. Rain and thunderstorms was experienced over the Fiji group. A low pressure system lies to the northwest of Fiji and associated cloud and rain continues to affect the group. In the west, mostly cloudy and humid conditions prevailed. From Pacific Harbor to Suva, occasional rain and a thunderstorm late this morning, followed by heavy showers this afternoon. And in the north, cloudy with showers, some heavy, there were reports of flooding of low-lying areas. At sea, southeast to northeast winds, 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. Turning to the tides, the next low tide is at 1.46 tomorrow morning, followed by high tide at 8.01 a.m. Sunrise is at 6.05. For tomorrow, periods of rain, heavy at times, and few thunderstorms, isolated heavy falls may lead to flash flooding of low-lying areas. Outlook for Tuesday, rain and thunderstorms over most places, strong winds over land areas of northern Bunolewu, Yasao Group and Lao and Lomaibiti groups expected to ease. Recapping our main stories, new leaders of Methodist Church to work with government, Prime Minister emphasizes unity and WEF rectifies water issues in Rewa. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question, this week we're asking, do you believe the roadworks being undertaken is up to par? Visit our FBC website to answer. You can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our various uh, uh, social media accounts, that's uh, Facebook and Twitter. That's your news for tonight. Until tomorrow, stay safe and mother mother. Hi, I'm Ini from Raki Raki. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits.